So I've been on a bit of a decluttering streak lately and we're gonna continue that streak today by decluttering my makeup. I still have quite a bit of makeup. I'm actually quite surprised by that, but by this point, I really know what it is I use and what I don't. And I've had a whole summer and now even a winter to get use out of the maybes that I decided I wanted to keep the last time I decluttered. So I'm gonna be getting rid of a whole lot of it today. And for those of you who don't know me, welcome. My name is Christina. I talk all about minimalism, intentional living, and intentional spending. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, then go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. But let's get into my makeup. Okay, so this is all the makeup that I own right now, and this actually is still quite a lot. Since my last makeup declutter in the summer, I have added a few things. Some things came as gifts and PR, other things were from collaborations that I do find myself using now quite frequently. So there are some new additions to this pile, but also quite a lot of bits that I absolutely never use. I don't really wear that much makeup. I'm such a makeup lover. I really collected makeup for so long. A lot of these are extremely expired. I tend to keep makeup for probably way longer than I should. And also, I find my makeup needs have really changed where I don't really find myself wearing a whole lot of foundation, for example. I don't wear heavy, heavy makeup. I never do crazy eyeshadow looks. I don't really wanna put my stock, I guess, into doing any more than, than I need. So I'm just gonna let go of some of these bits. So I guess we'll start with complexion. All of this is basically what I wear on a fairly like everyday basis. The sunscreen that I'm using is this one from La Roche-Posay. It is a mineral sunscreen. I actually really like this. I switch between this and the Ulta MD UV Clear SPF. So this it Cosmetics CC Cream, I have had this for a couple of years now. This is actually a really, really nice face-based foundation. It goes on really well, really evens things out. It doesn't break me out, but it's starting to smell a little bit off, so I should probably toss this. This Goodness Glows Burt's Bees Tinted Moisturizer is fairly new to me. This is in the shade Ivory. I think all it really does is just sort of even out your skin tone, even out any redness. On a day-to-day -day basis, I really only wear my concealers, but I like to wear this on weekends if I feel like giving myself a little bit of a glow up. But yeah, I've really been enjoying this ever since I got it. So wearing that every once in a while along with my sunscreen, that's more than enough for me. This is essentially pretty much what I wear on an everyday basis. These are my concealers. I've had this NARS soft matte concealer for quite some time. I think a lot of you guys said I should get rid of it because I've had it for at least a year. It's a little bit more of a dry matte texture. On days when I prefer a little bit more of a light coverage or in the summertime, I really like this RMS on cover up concealer. This to me sort of reminds me of like a Glossier stretch concealer, but with just a little bit more coverage, a little bit more bang for your buck when it comes to evening things out, getting rid of redness, things like that. It's not the greatest for covering up any zits or anything, but I do like this for my under eyes and just sort of evening out my skin a little bit more on top of my tinted moisturizer and my sunscreen. And then this I bought in 2020. This is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Cream in light to medium. So this I've been wearing under my eyes lately because I don't know, I'm on camera a lot these days. To be honest, I bought this because I was feeling self-conscious about my face and wanted to add a little bit of a corrector. So I've been using that. So in terms of face-based foundations, I am keeping all of these things. They are all fairly active and on the go. This is everything I have for eyeshadow. You have seen these survive pretty much every and all of my makeup declutters. These are the Tom Ford, what are they called? Cream and powder eye color duos. They're sort of really bouncy and almost like spongy in texture. And on the tops they have these glittery kind of toppers. I am so bad at swatching, I don't know. I think I definitely go for this copper color 
more frequently than this peach, but I do like both of them. This one I like in the summer, and this is basically my go-to eyeshadow. It blends really well, it layers really well, so I sort of just do this like kind of bronzy, smoky eye whenever I feel like I wanna do eyeshadow. And then these two single eyeshadows from MAC were actually gifted to me. They were, they came in a kit from the August Diaries. She is an amazing blogger, YouTuber here from Toronto. She does amazing, like really easy, minimalist, no fuss makeup that I absolutely love. So in her kit is the shade Saddle, which is a matte. And my favorite out of the two is Mulch. I find Saddle doesn't really work that well for me. I think it's because I am like ghostly, ghostly pale and it just doesn't, really work so I think I'll give saddle to my sister and hold on to the mulch for like smoky eyes kind of do like eyeliner looks that type of thing so out of all of these I'm going to declutter saddle and keep these three guys for now okay so my Mascara, eyeliner, and brow pencil collection has expanded since my last declutter. I got some things as gifts in PR, I got some things as part of collaborations, and I just have some backups that I purchased on the go. I'm still using these Oakenfort O brows. Look how much more product there is left to go. That's pretty nuts. So when I want a more feathery brow, I sort of mix these two together. So one is the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I have this in medium brown. This one's a really nice tried and true thin pencil. And then the Kimiko is, um, I think it's a Japanese brand that I picked up from the detox market on a recommendation. This one is quite a bit warmer than the Anastasia, so I just mix them together to get a more feathery, glossier looking brow. And my brows, that's probably where I spend the most time in my makeup routine, just because I don't have any. I plucked my brows when I was like 12 years old and they never, ever grew back. So in terms of eyeliners, I have all of these on the go. And out of the eyeliner I wear the most often right now, it's this Burt's Bees Defining Eyeliner Precision Pencil. It's pretty thick in terms of the stilo, the pencil tip with it, but I like it. And I just sort of go in the corner of my eyes and flick it out and sort of blend it. So these were sent to me when I collaborated with Burt's Bees a few videos back. And I also chose the copper shade. Um, I haven't actually used this yet. And the reason I chose it was because with my brown eyes, I saw a video by Violette where she talks about adding a copper eyeliner to help sort of brown eyes pop. So I thought I would give that a try in the video and I never did. I just went with my like tried and true. Since this hasn't been used, I think I might just give it away because I really don't foresee myself using it, but I'll keep this Burt's Bees one. I actually really like it a lot. The thing I only really carry backups with is my mascaras because those do tend to run out really quickly and my eyes are really sensitive. So this is my mascara backup. I've talked about this mascara over and over and over again. It's probably the most consistent mascara I've used over time. It's the Ilia Limitless Lash Mascara. This one is just a really nice natural looking mascara. It gives really nice separation. It's sort of I feel like it gives a little bit of a lengthening effect to my lashes. It doesn't bother my eyes. It doesn't transfer too badly because I have really oily lids and a lot of mascaras tend to transfer on me. This one doesn't as bad, but I do find when it starts to dry up, it really flakes into my eyes a lot. So that's when I know I kind of need to start using a new one. But so far the Ilia has been my favorite. And the mascara I've been using lately is the Burt's Bees All Flutter Multi Benefit Mascara. So this one is actually really lovely. It has more of like a fluffy fat kind of brush. Just adds some like thickness and color to my lashes. It stays on all day, it doesn't flake into my eyes, so I've really been enjoying this one. It feels more like a conditioning kind of mascara if I were to describe it in any way. I kind of knew this was gonna happen. Not too much declutter here, but I'm also using this. All of these have a purpose, so I'm all right with that. 
Okay, so here we have all of my blushes, bronzers, and face palettes. Out of all of my makeup, I think besides my lipstick, this is the most excessive part of my collection. A lot of these I gave myself a chance to use in the summer and over this past winter, and I just haven't been using them. So the first thing I can see right away is this Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow face palette. I use this quite a lot. Actually, it's one of my, I'd say, regulars when it comes to bronzers and highlighters. It can provide like a nice sort of warm glow, and if I wanted to, it also is cool enough on my skin that I could do a bit of a contour with it, although I never really contour, but if I wanted to, I could. And I do really like this highlighter. It's just like a really nice champagne-y kind of highlight. This is definitely one I'm going to be keeping. Bronzers and highlighters especially, I was quite obsessed with collecting and trying out the different ones and the newer better and it takes so long to go through these. These days I'm just really focusing on having less but project panning the hell out of them. This is a bronzer that I actually meant to declutter last time I did a makeup declutter. This is the Hourglass Luminous Bronze Light Bronzer. It translates a little red on me on my skin and the reason I put it back was because it sort of sat around for a while and then I just kept sort of walking by it before I could give it away and I was just like, oh, let me try this again. And still every time I go to use it, it looks a little red, it looks a little weird and clowny on me. So this time I'm really gonna give it away. Next bronzer I use quite a lot and that I actually really enjoy is this Marc Jacobs Omega Bronze in Tantastic. It is absolutely massive. And if you compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury, they're pretty similar. So I like to interchange between the Charlotte Tilbury and the Marc Jacobs, but this is gonna take me a hundred years to hit pan on. This here is another palette from Hourglass that I bought a couple of years ago. This is the Ambient Lighting Edit Volume 4. Over the past couple of months, I've actually been using it quite a bit. Typically, I like to use the bronzer, which this one I find is a lot less red on me. So if you put these side by side, I find this one is still a lot more red in undertone. So I think I will keep it. I don't think that's horrible. Now getting into highlighters and blushes, I think pretty much all of my cream products really have to go. This from Kier Weiss, I actually really like this blush. This is in Sun Touched. It's a really nice cream blush, but it's actually now starting to ball up. It smells very Play-Doh-y now. This is the Glossier Haloscope in Moonstone. I had quartz in the past and I really wasn't using it that much so I got rid of it in my last declutter. This I have not really touched at all but it gives like a really nice like iridescent lit from within glow. It really looks like your skin is wet. If you like that dewy glass skin kind of look I really like the Haloscope by Glossier for that, but I really haven't used this. Um, it's pretty nasty now, so I think it's time to toss this. And same with the RMS Living Luminizer. Yeah, I think when they go bad, they get really like sticky because I remember when this was like good, it's more creamy, but now it feels really sticky and kind of weird. It's definitely gone bad. Would I repurchase? Uh, I'd say probably not. I think I like the Glossier a little bit better in when it comes to getting this kind of balmy look on the skin. But it, I did really enjoy it while I used it. I clearly didn't use it enough though. Okay, so for me, when it comes to my lipsticks, I really like a red lip. That is pretty much the only thing I wear. So I think this might be pretty quick to whittle down because there's bits in here that I definitely haven't worn that have probably gone bad. Specifically this NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment in Star Woman. It makes me think of David Bowie when I hear this name, which I really like. This is a really nice sort of blue red liquid lip, but I never wear liquid lips. One of the colors I wear quite frequently is this Freckle Fiesta from Fenty. So it's like a terracotta kind of orangey color and I like to mix it either with my Very Mangled Ruby Woo by MAC or I mix it with Red Square from NARS which is probably one of my favorite orangey sort of fire engine red lipsticks. This is a YSL Rouge Pure Couture lip color. I wear this quite a lot. I actually really like the YSL formulas, but even more special, this tube was engraved with Chica's name on it. So definitely keeping that. And then the lipstick that I'm going to declutter here is 
this one from Bite Beauty. It's called Fig. See, it's not even swatching. Like, that's how bad it's gone. I've never really seen a lipstick go bad, but I guess it can happen. This color I actually really like. I think it looks really nice, and it actually works on my lips. Like, it doesn't make them look too brown. It actually brings out the pinkness in my lips, but as you can see. And then this one is another Chanel product that... You know, I just didn't really get a lot of use out of. This is probably the most unique lip product that I have. So this is a powder and this is like a, it's kind of like a Vaseline-y kind of hydrator. So you put the, you tap the powder on your lips and then you can make it into a glossy kind of look or seal it all in with this um, like petrol atom. So that's kind of what it's supposed to do. But I really haven't used this, so. I think I'm more of a lipstick person. So this is my entire makeup collection now, you guys. I think that has been whittled down quite nicely. I ended up freeing up this container. I still think there's bits that I could get rid of, but I'm gonna give, you know, I don't have to do it all today. This is everything I've decluttered, including some makeup brushes. I got rid of, remember when everyone had their brushes in this like Ikea flower pot? Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that. So some of these I'm gonna wash and give away. I'm gonna do my best to like empty out so I can make sure I can recycle them. And I know um, there's a detox market here in Toronto and they will take your old makeup and like skincare jars and stuff and they will recycle them properly because they work with TerraCycle. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. Also, I found all these hair ties in my makeup brush flower pot. How do I fix that? Okay, so that's it for the makeup, but I feel pretty good about this. I still think there's bits that I could for sure continue to whittle down, but that can be for another day, another mood, another hydration status, I think.